Okay, question four on the June 2009 paper. Let's look and see what happens. Okay, so we've got an inclined plane, plane problem. So first, most important thing, let's get a diagram drawn. So let's get... A diagram drawn and we've got a little brick let's just model it as a particle here and then we've got all sorts of various for well we know that this angle in here oops this angle in here is theta first and foremost I know there's various forces I know that the mass of the particle is acting down mass times g, so it's 0.5g, the weight of the particle is acting down. I know that the reaction force between the particle and the slope is r. I also know that this particle, there's no external forces acting on it, so this particle, the natural state of being is it wants to slide down slope acceleration a. And because it wants to do that, and it's a rough plane, there must be a frictional force that's opposing the motion down the plane, FR. Now that leads me to two things straight away. First of all, it leads me to think, well, what's my coefficient of friction? If there is rough, it tells us in the question it's one third. The other thing it instantly tells me is that the maximum value that friction can take, F max, is equal to mu R. Now that's an important point. We might need that later on. Okay, the only other thing we should do is maybe draw force diagrams just because this 0.5g acting straight down the weight of the particle is not acting in the same direction, it's even not acting either perpendicular or parallel to the plane. So let's break it up into its components so it is. Let's draw the hypotenuse, then draw the parallel component and the perpendicular component where this is theta up here. And this is our 0.5g here. Now that means that this is 0.5g cosine of theta. And this is 0.5g sine theta. And we've got one more thing. Well, actually, we know something about theta. So let's draw that out over here as well. We know that if we had a right angle triangle that looked like this, and this angle in here was theta, we know because of tan theta being 4 over 3, we know that this opposite is 4 and this adjacent is 3, and because of our Pythagoras theorem, it's a right angle triangle, we know that this is 5, a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Because of that, that can easily tell us that we can work out what cosine theta is, which is the adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 3 fifths, and we know that sine theta is equal to 4 fifths, the opposite over hypotenuse. Now, that's going to help us out, because actually we can use this and replace cosine theta here with 3 fifths, so 3 fifths times 0 0.5 is equal to 0 0.3 g, and we can replace sine theta with 4 fifths, which makes this 0.4g. Okay, quite a little bit of work before we get started. But there's worth marks in here for recognising this and also breaking this, having a good diagram of breaking this up into components. Now, let's resolve in two different directions. So let's resolve the direction the brick wants to move, which is down the plane. Then I've got this component of weight, which is 0.4 for g minus the friction which is acting up the plane or for f max because it's moving and that must be equal to the mass times the acceleration which is 0.5 a that's from Newton's second law f equals ma this is the combined f not don't get confused with friction this is the combined force which is equal to the mass times the acceleration now if we resolve, let's call this equation number 1, if we resolve perpendicular to the plane, then we're going to have R acting up, we're going to have this component of the weight acting down through the plane, so that's 0.3g, 
once we've used, just used it from here and this is equal to zero because there is no motion uh, away from the plane. This tells us that R is equal to 0.3 G which we can work out if we needed to using our calculator 0.3 times 0.8 but I'm not going to do that at the moment I'm just going to call that. If I then take this value and I substitute this value into the first equation if I substitute into equation number 1 I get 0.4 g minus, it should be minus the friction, but I know that the friction is equal to mu r. So I'm going to write that out. So mu is one third and r is 0.3 g is equal to the mass times acceleration. Now I can use my calculator to uh, calculate all of this. So really I get a is equal to 0.3 g divided by 0.5 again using my calculator with g is 9.8 I find a is equal to 5.88 ms minus 2 so a lot of groundwork to start with drawing our diagram and our triangles but once we've done that once we've got into the algebra and the calculation not very difficult at all and so we're finished